So I'm standing here with Matt Harvey from Exhumed. Hi. Hi. So your new album, Necrocracy, is a bit different and more melodic than the other ones. <laughs> How did the fans react? Um, so far, I've actually been really surprised that I haven't heard more people complaining about it, um, which is good. I mean, I, I don't think that we went too out on a limb. It wasn't like all of a sudden the band sounds like Arch Enemy or something like that. <laughs> But, you know, compared to the early records, it's definitely it's a little bit more, uh, I guess, accessible or whatever. I mean, to me, I think that with the All Guts No Glory record we did previously, like, we felt really happy with that, and we didn't want to just repeat ourselves you know what i mean and and also playing live um we just felt like we had like only fast songs to choose from and, and we needed some some different tempos to mix it up you know what i mean um i mean even like if you look at like rain and blood by slayer or whatever like still the most popular two songs are angel of death and postmortem which are the slowest songs on the album because they're the catchiest and and so we wanted to just kind of Just to bring a little bit more groove to things, and there's definitely still a lot of blast beats and a lot of like high vocals and low vocals and songs about dead bodies and stuff. So I mean, it's not like you know, I, I don't want people to get the wrong impression, you know. <laughs> But uh, you know, it, it is a little bit different, and I'm definitely stoked on that. I mean, I think um, people have seemed to really like it, and the reviews have seemed to be really positive, which is. A nice coincidence. I mean, we always write for ourselves first, but when other people like it, that is even better, you know? <laughs> well, about the dead bodies, uh, I read <laughs> in an interview that uh, the guts and gore are actually metaphors for, um, yeah, for example, the American elections. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, with this one, I mean, we've always, I shouldn't say always, but often throughout the past, we've used the gore and horror stuff um, as a metaphor. I mean, I, you know, a lot like George Romero. I mean, you know, all the old school, Down to the Living Dead and Day of the Dead, they're all metaphorical, you know, uh, about consumerism or racism or whatever it's about. And um, so we've kind of done the same thing. And, and this album is a little bit more focused. Um, it, we were writing everything and getting ready to record during the election cycle in, in America. And, um, you know, I, I also used to work at Alternative Tentacles and... I've read a bit of Noam Chomsky and that kind of stuff. I'm not super up on it or whatever, but at the same time, even a guy that you know goes on tour most of the year and drinks beer every day can look around at uh, American politics and be like, "This is really fucked up," you know. Um, and it's not just a left issue or a right issue. It's just it seems like everybody is getting the important stuff wrong, you know. And um, It's very frustrating because, especially, you know, you come over here and people, like, you know, like bust their balls about how dumb America is. And you're like, well, it's pretty dumb. <laughs> I love, I mean, I love America and I love living there and all that stuff. I'm from there and it's great. There's a, way more good things about it than bad, but the bad things are just so okay. embarrassing. <laughs> and like just the, the, you know, the amount of corruption and just the sort of entrenchment of uh, the corporate world and the political world. It's it's a pretty disheartening thing, you know. Um, and just the what I what I see is as my grandparents and parents grow older or whatever. There's just a there's a lack of uh, sustainability on a widespread, you know, whether it's environmental or whether it's just even like the personal financial politics of having a job and a pension and all that stuff. There's just an erosion of that across the board in, in the country and. So anyway, you know, I, I mean, just because we've been, we've written so many songs about cannibalism, necrophilia, and like, you know, writing with guts and stabbing people, and that's cool too. And there's a couple songs on the record that are just about that kind of shit as well. Um, but we try to make it in a way that if you're just a guy that likes gory lyrics, like, cool, read it, and that's cool, and you enjoy it. And if you want to delve a little bit deeper, then that's cool too, and there's something more to chew on. But um, like I said, I mean, I'm not. Uh, the most politically aware person, so I'm not the person to be like. Let me tell you th the way it should be. Like I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. But it's just these are just you know the thoughts. <laughs> yeah, but it's good. Yeah. You have a message in your lyrics. Um, you like to drink beer, huh? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> have you tried some Belgian beers already? Oh, yeah, yeah. Belgian beer is pretty much the best. Like Belgian, German, and Czech is like my favorite. You know, I think German beer is more like an everyday kind of like lighter, like lager or whatever. And then the Belgian ale is like when you want to get serious. You know, you go for like a Duvel or a Delirium Tremens or. Have you tried Omer? 
Uh, I don't think I have. You should try it. Okay. It's one of our best beers. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so you're a very good live band. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. I saw you already. <laughs> and I'm, uh, of course, a reference for that. Um, <laughs> but you're playing bigger and better festivals, but do you still enjoy to, to play the smaller venues? Yeah. I mean, to me, like... As long as the, the show is full and the kids have energy, it doesn't matter if you're playing in a room for 80 people, if it's a room that's full, or 800 people, if it's a room that's full, you know? I mean, you, we've played shows where the only venue we could get is like an 800 capacity venue, and it's a market where we can only draw like 180 kids, and that's when it sucks. But if you put 180 kids in a room that only holds 200 people, then all of a sudden the energy level is really good. and. Um, you know, some of the larger festivals, it's almost like everything is cool except the show. Like, there's a fucking giant photo barrier. So you're like, hello, people that I assume are there. I can't see you because there's too many lights. <laughs> Shit like that. You know what I mean? And <clears throat> I, I would much prefer the, sta you know, the kids to be right up front of the stage. And, you know, hopefully if they want to stage dive or, or whatever. As long as they're not, like, breaking our gear while they're stage diving, then I'm all for it, you know? Has um, that uh, ever happened? Oh yeah, <laughs> I've moved my pedal board to the back of the of the stage for precisely that reason. Oh, and we were doing a show with Napalm Death and Municipal Waste in Oakland, and a kid staged of totally accidentally, but it, as he jumped off, his foot flipped up and hit the mic stand, and the microphone busted my lip open. Luckily, it was the second to last song, so we just finished the set, and then I went to the hospital and got stitches or whatever. But oh, uh, and now I have a mustache, so you can't see it anyway. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I mean, there's definitely some occupational hazards involved or whatever. But uh, as long as the energy level of the kids is good, because ultimately, I mean, we play, you know, about 150 shows a year, and uh, we've heard all our songs, so we're not really playing them for ourselves. You know, people are like, what's your favorite song to play live? I'm like, I don't really give a shit. The one that makes people Thanks. jump off the fucking stage and like move in a circle pit, like that's the song that I like the best because. If we're playing live, we're playing for the audience, you know, and to get them involved in the energy that they, you know, it's cliche or whatever, but it's like we give energy through the music, they give energy back, and then it's like a feedback loop or whatever, and then everybody has a good time. So yeah, I think that's why you do it, of course. That and all the dozens of dollars that we oh, make. Oh, okay, yeah, I see it. You're <laughs> very fancy, very fancy. That's right. I got to make my Ferrari payment. <laughs> I hope you come here by jet. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> or helicopter. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just a, there's no helipad at this venue though, so we took the jet. Um, have you seen any of the other bands or already? Uh, I I haven't today, to be honest. Um, we, we we've been on tour since. Uh, I don't know, mid January or whatever. We did a month with Toxic Holocaust, and we had a week and a half off, and then we started this tour. And especially when your dressing room is like three flights of stairs away from the show, it's hard to like yeah. get the motivation to catch the bands. And it it sucks because I mean I feel like a dick saying that, but um, I you know there are some days. Also, we partied pretty hard last night. We there was like a club night after our show so we were all drinking like these weird fruity shots that tasted like candy and I just remember like being on a dance floor like dancing to Daft Punk and just like being an idiot so today was a little bit more reserved <laughs> sounds like a very good party yeah, it was actually it was super fun <laughs> okay yeah. so I think that's basically it